Hello, this is Bob Browner with uh, Community Coronavirus Update number 80. So today we'll talk about uh, protecting the kids, uh, the Delta variant, and two common misperceptions. And so I think one of the biggest challenges right now is what, what do parents with young children do uh, to reduce the risk of their kids getting coronavirus? Because there's no vaccine uh, for under the age of 12. And then what is the strategy when we bring kids back to the school? And so there's a good uh, interview with uh, Dr. Lena Wen and Yahoo News because she herself is a, a public health physician with young children about what she's thinking through. And I think it's a good perspective that's worth reading. And uh, I think it's uh, premature. Hopefully you didn't throw away your masks. I think there is a chance we may be having masks inter at least intermittently in school this fall. Uh, and you still have to be a little more careful. So of course she talks about uh, d things like, you know, you know, defaulting to outdoors where it's substantially safer, of course. Uh, but then uh, uh, in, in indoor settings, you may still want your children under 12 wearing a mask uh, to protect them. And so this is, uh, I think, one of the biggest challenges for, for young parents right now. Um, there is uh, some uh, concern. I think it's a little overblown with the risk of cardiomyopathy with the Pfizer vaccine. And so the American Academy of Pediatrics put out this statement uh, after all the data coming out uh, and saying, yeah, yes, this is, this is a risk. However, it's extremely rare, uh, especially when compared to other things. Uh, and people are forgetting that, although, yes, the vaccine has a very, very, very small risk of cardiomyopathy, getting coronavirus has a higher risk of cardiomyopathy. And so a lot of things are not risk versus nothing. It's a risk versus the other risk. And so the, they did put out some good information this week trying to help uh, give people a better understanding of what that risk really is and is not. Um, and your local epidemiologist uh, did a great job. So uh, Dr. Caitlin uh, Gentilina is uh, one of my places I keep looking. She always produces nice, concise summaries. And so you might want to read hers. Uh, and she breaks it down the data by age group. But you can also go straight to the source, which is the CDC uh, presentation a couple days ago where they walk through this. And uh, I think they did a good job with uh, some of the visuals they put together. And so uh, people are forgetting that kids are low risk, but not no risk. Uh, there is still a risk of both hospitalization and death for children. Certainly it's lower than older age groups, but it's still there. Uh, but also you need to look at it comparison. I think visual comparisons of risk are the most helpful. And so on the right, you have the cases of card myocarditis uh, from the vaccine, and it barely shows up when compared to the risk of hospitalization from actually having coronavirus. And so I think this is a visual way to hopefully help you figure out that, yes, there is a slight risk, uh, but it's nowhere near as bad as having coronavirus itself. And also, most of those cases of myocarditis go, along, go away on their own with no treatment, and so it's usually very mild. Um, and so, yes, there could be some uh, cases of myocarditis, and the highest uh, risk is in, is in teenage boys. Uh, but there's also a risk in the teenage boys of things like uh, hospitalization, ICU admission, and death, too. And so when you compare those against them, it's still uh, the right choice is getting your child vaccinated. Um, the next question, though, I think that's unanswered in Nebraska is what's our strategy this fall for schools? Uh, UNL, I think, is actually uh, kind of a leader here. I think they did, that, they did a great job by having uh, surveillance testing uh, starting in January. Uh, they created a very safe environment with the, the system they put in place, and they're giving people choice. You can either A, get vaccinated, or B, uh, you can do a random uh, or weekly saliva-based testing. So these two things, you can have your choice. You have to do one or the other at least, uh, but I think this is a good approach. Uh, you know, we're not forcing everybody to do one thing, you can have a choice. Uh, and I think we should be doing something like this for our schools. So for example, something we could consider uh, for safe schools, you could give a child, the, uh, say a high school kid, the choice of either A, getting vaccinated or weekly saliva testing or wearing a mask or choosing remote learning. Uh, plenty of choices. If you do one of these four, you could uh, create a safe environment, uh, but you can't do nothing. And so we'll see what, if there's a plan uh, for schools this fall. I hope the state would start, will be, is working on something like this, like UNL has already put together. Uh, but we only got a couple months, so hopefully there will be some, uh, some good meetings of public health folks and, and schools uh, in, the, in the coming weeks uh, so we have a good plan going into August. Uh, you know, we can do this, and like I've used the example before, Hawaii, you have the option just like uh, we taught, just like UNL is doing and what I just suggested, where you can either A, get vaccinated, or B, get tested. You can have a smartphone app. Uh, UNL has a smartphone app, uh, and as do our other states uh, and other countries. Uh, so the other problem we're having is vaccination progress. So we've made a, a lot of progress in some areas and very little progress in other areas. And so this COVID Act Now visualization, I think, gives you a pretty good idea of where coronavirus is likely to be spreading in the next uh, few weeks. So the Delta variant's coming, and, and, and basically all those light blue areas, that's where Delta is going to spread like wildfire likely in the next uh, few weeks or months. Uh, if you look at the risk level, it matches up pretty well. So those low vaccination rate areas, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Wyoming, and Nevada, that's where it's starting to spread. So the numbers in those areas are starting to head back up again. 
uh, and it's basically the Delta variant, which is very quickly uh, replacing uh, the others. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, there's 99% of UK already. We're already at 20 to 30%. And so it's uh, the Delta variant's likely going to replace everything else pretty quickly here. And that's what's going to cause the spread. Uh, county level view gives you a little bit better view and so uh, of course you can see Missouri which is the, the has the highest numbers right now but un unfortunately on the other side of the start of Nebraska you got Cheyenne Wyoming too uh, is this going to leak into Nebraska and of course you know, know may notice that Nebraska is gray because the state isn't uh, sharing county level data anymore and so when you go to COVID Act now all you see is a, is a gray box there uh, you can go to the state's website and look at least the public health district level and so it looks like this, and so it looks like there may be an, uh, an outbreak potentially starting in the York area, uh, Four Corners area, but you know, is, are we going to get some uh, cases of that Delta leaking over into the, across the border in the south, southeast Nebraska, or will some of that stuff from Cheyenne start coming into Panhandle? I think we'll just have to wait in the coming weeks and uh, see what happens. Uh, we're, we've, you know, we can look uh, to our friends in the United Kingdom to see what this looks like because essentially their vaccination rates are very close to ours nationally. Their rates got down to where ours were, but in the last couple of weeks you can see this rapid rise and they're already almost 20 per 100,000. And so what, that, what you're seeing there is the Delta variant A is much, much more infectious and can, can spread pretty rapidly. And those people who thought they were, were immune because they got the, the Alpha you know, B117 variant uh, this fall may not be immune to the next one coming this way. And that's the other misconception is that, uh, that just because you hadn't na uh, coronavirus the quote natural way doesn't give you lasting immunity, it looks like, especially to the new variants. Uh, and, you know, of course, we've talked about this before. Brazil learned this the hard way with Manaus. The same thing happened there. And so history just keeps repeating itself. So people are not learning this lesson. Um, so, you know, UK is uh, going to learn a lesson. It looks like we are, it's going to be, well, in the United States, it's Missouri and some areas of the Deep South and Wyoming. Uh, we'll just follow these over the next few weeks. And I don't think, uh, you know, some of the ideas, some of the people saying we're, we're going to have surges in this fall, I think that's uh, late. Actually, it's going to be in the next month or two, probably. Um, and so that's, again, like I've talked about this modeling. You know, we've got a pretty wide range. Uh, I, we can't predict with any degree of certainty how bad the next surge is, but it, the range of uncertainty is really, really wide. So do we want to really take that risk and just drop off call caution? You know, the range of deaths per week of 70 to 2,500. We're def I don't think we're going to be on this low end of 70. We'll probably be at least the mid-range, but it's, it is in the range of possibility we could be up to here again uh, if Delta spreads out of control and we don't react quickly this time again. Um, so what does this mean? Well, you know, there's implications for concerts and Husker football this, this uh, fall. Uh, we would we wanted to have uh, full attendance at all this stuff, and it looks like we're going to, but Delta might uh, put a stop to that potentially. Now, we could make that safe by either A, requiring you to be vaccinated before you come, or B, required a negative test in an app like everybody else is, uh, across the world has been doing, or C, wear a mask. You can choose one of those three. That could make all of these things safe. The same implications for schools this fall. Does Nebraska have a plan going into this fall? And I've not heard one yet, but I hope one will be created in the next in the coming weeks. Uh, and so, you know, I'll just finish with these two common misperceptions. Although kids are low risk, they are not no risk. Uh, and natural immunity likely will not protect you against new variants. You need a vaccine. Uh, the other problem that comes up is if we let, if we did let this virus run amok in a quote low risk group of, of the population, that's what causes new variants. And so this virus will keep evolving and, and we don't want to get to the point where we evade our current vaccination uh, immunity. And so we need to tamp down uh, spread. So hopefully we'll do something quickly in the coming weeks if we see this re uh, rebounding, uh, but only time will tell. So short update today, but this is, a, I think, one of the key things to look at. Uh, follow those rates, and we'll see what happens in the next week or two. I think we'll have our answer on how bad Delta is going to be, uh, possibly within weeks. So hopefully this is helpful to you. This is what I do for my day job. But disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily those uh, of the organizations I work with. Uh, remember, the links to all these uh, articles are in the notes section of the YouTube video. So scroll down, and you can look at those articles yourself if you want to read through them.